Hi, I'm Rachel, and today I'm going to show you all the techniques required for block six of the Cascade Yarns Knitterati Gradient Lapkin. So this is the completed block six, and it's really, really cool because it's got some really great texture going on in it. And um, these, these little bits of texture here that you can see throughout the square are created using a short row technique, which creates an actual fold in the fabric. And what that does is add a lot of dimensionality to the finished square. So it's really a cool technique um, that you get to learn in this square. So I'm gonna show you how to do that on my little swatch here. And to complete this section, you're also going to need a little bit of waste yarn on a darning needle. So have that ready to go. It should be the length of your square. So I have a little shorter piece here because my swatch is smaller, but you'll want a slightly longer piece that'll, that'll stretch all the way across your square when you're ready to actually knit. So um, the pattern is pretty simple, and you start it by just going ahead and completing six rows, which I've done here um, so that we can jump right into the actual welting technique. Um, and then in the pattern, you are gonna place this waste yarn in a way that allows you to see the backside of your welts when you come back to them, um, when you're actually joining them to create the, the dimensional texture. And then, when you do that, you're gonna basically do a row where you don't actually knit a stitch at all. You wanna leave your working yarn here, you're not gonna use it, and you're just placing waste yarn um, as a marker for yourself for the welts that you're about to create. So go ahead and slip these first two stitches, do them purlwise so you don't twist them, and then take your waste yarn and slip 10, because I'm gonna show you the 10 stitch welt right now. So I've got those all on my needle and then I'm gonna pull the yarn through. Now I pulled them all the way off the needle and you can do it that way or I'll show you a slightly quicker way to do it after this because what you're gonna to have to do now is pick these back up and put them on the needle. So it's kind of a, a double um, method. It's really just a matter of personal preference which one you choose to do. So now those are back on the needle, ready to go and you can see they've got this line of waste yarn threaded through them on the back side. And that's just gonna hang out there. Okay, so then you're gonna slip two more stitches. And then again, we're gonna do 10 stitches with the waist yarn. And this time I'm gonna kinda leave the stitches on my needle, flip it to the back side, and just sort of thread them through like this. So one, two, three, four, five. This is a little harder to get in between the needle and the stitch, so you might want to pull it through part of the way, part of the way down. Whoop, got that needle wrapped around. It's a little funky, but you just kind of figure out a way that works for you to get it done. And then another one, two, three, four, and five. Okay. So pull that through, and now I am prepped to do 10 welts on this row. So since this was a non-working row, it was just a placement of waste yarn, I'm just gonna slip these stitches right back over onto my left-hand needle where they will be ready for me to work with. Just be very careful when you're slipping stitches that have waste yarn behind them, just to make sure you grab the leg of the stitch properly because that waste yarn is gonna kinda wanna get in your way. So if you get in between the, um, the actual working yarn and the needle, and just keep the waste yarn on the bottom, it should be okay. Alrighty, so let me just show you what this looks like on the wrong side. So you can see you've got 10 stitches right here, and then you skipped two, and then 10 stitches right here. And then that's gonna get repeated across the whole square, um, the designated number of repeats in the pattern. So now we're ready to actually welt. So this is where the short rows come in that I mentioned before. So this square has a lovely finished edge on it with slip stitches. So you're gonna start by slipping 
the yarn, or slipping the stitch purlwise with the yarn in front and then pulling it to the back. And now you're ready to work. Knit one stitch. Now here's our first welt. So what we're gonna do is knit 10 stitches like you normally would. So one, And stop here and rather than moving on to the next stitch you're actually going to turn your work in the middle of it that's what a short row is it's where you turn your work before you actually get to the end of the row and now we're going to purl back 10 stitches At the end of this row again once again it's a short row so we're going to turn in the middle so turn your work I'm actually going to move my skein over to the other side here so it's pulling from the right direction and then I've done that two times now so you can see my waist yarn is threaded through right here and then I've done one row two rows so for each welt you're gonna have six short rows so I need to do four more rows. I've done two. This one will be row three. And then turn your work again and purl back on the wrong side. You don't need to worry about the edges on this too much. Um, you don't need like a super neat edge or anything like that because it's going to get folded up into the, into the welt. So it doesn't matter too much what it looks like. Turn the work again. And then we've got one more right side and one more wrong side to go. So you can see if you haven't done short rows before it does look a little crazy because you've got this like long flap of knitting almost right in the middle of your piece and that's what's going to end up being folded down to create your texture okay so this is the last wrong side row just purling back and then the next step while the most fun is definitely the trickiest part of this um, welting technique. Okay, so turn your work one more time to the front. And then this is where we actually join these 10 stitches right here to the back side of the work, back down here where your waist yarn is indicating. So this is definitely the trickiest part because you want your welt to be nice and even and have these rows um, lining up with the rows in the, the regular part of the square. So you want to be really careful when you go to grab the waist yarn that you are grabbing the right part of it. So I'm going to show you before I actually start. Because when I've practiced this, the part I had trouble with is that your waist yarn is eventually going to start pulling kind of tight. And it's hard to see which leg is which, like which part of this you need to be picking up to knit, which I'll show you in a second. So my recommendation is, and it'll be kind of hard to see once I get going, but the easiest thing I found to do was to pull the waist yarn out next to it so that you could grab the two strands together and pull out a loop just like that. And that, that right there is gonna be the stitch that you connect the um, the two stitches together with. So I'm going to let that go and kind of even out that tension again and get started doing the real thing. Okay, so fold your 10 working stitches over 
so that they're close to where your waste yarn is. Kind of move your working yarn out of the way. Grab that first leg, just like I said. Like I said, I like to grab the waste yarn and then pull the leg out. And then once you do that, whoopsie, you can just get your hands around all those stitches and pieces of yarn <laughs> and then grab that loop and put it up onto the needle. And then these two stitches right here, this is the one from down below and this is the one, the current working stitch. You're gonna not have your yarn wrapped around itself. <laughs> there we go. Okay, you're gonna knit those two together and then pull that stitch right off. And then I've also found it's easiest to go ahead and pull the waste yarn out after you're done with the stitch so that it's not in your way anymore. So you're gonna continue doing that. And once you kind of get what you're looking at, you can just reach down and pick up the leg of the stitch that you need. So here's my next one. And then knit those two together. So now we've done two of them. Okay, pull that apart a little bit. And then see that next leg. You can see your waist yarn is crossing under that strand. So that's the guy to pick up. And then knit those two together. So we've got three of our 10 on the needles now. And then pull this out. So my stitches are starting to get tight, so I'm gonna grab the waist yarn this time to help pull that stitch out. So there's my loop. Grab it, pull the waist yarn out, knit it together. There's four. Halfway there. Okay. All right, pull that loop out, put it up on the needle. And you can see as I go, I'm just getting more and more comfortable with the rhythm. And you'll find that too after you do this a couple times that you just gotta like settle into the into the motions that work well for you the way you personally hold your yarn and hold your needles and all that kind of stuff. Okay, grab that loop, put it up on the needle, and pull out that waist yarn, and then knit it together. Three more to go, almost there. So when you're joining these stitches, you're, you're pulling the tension on that lower row pretty tight. So it, as you get closer and closer to the end, it's gonna get harder and harder to pull these loops out, which is where the waist yarn really comes in handy to help make sure that you're picking up the right, the right stitch below. Okay. Two more. Almost there. Put this loop. Waist yarn. And it's quicker, and then just one more. Oh, and gotta watch too your if you cut a shorter tail or a shorter piece of waist yarn, make sure you're not pulling it out of the end of the work and um, uh, pulling it out of the stitches at the end. So just be real careful about that. A nice long piece will really be helpful for this stitch. Okay, and that's it, we're all done. We've created our first welt. So these middle stitches will help anchor it so that it doesn't look so disconnected. And then of course, when you come back and knit the wrong side, it'll, it'll um, join it all together and make it look really nice. 
But that is how you make a knitted welt. This is the 10 stitch. The six stitch is the exact same technique, except you only use six stitches instead of 10, but otherwise it is exactly the same. Thanks so much for knitting along with me. Make sure to check back in three weeks for the next block of the Lapgan, and also check out our YouTube channel for more videos and tutorials just like this one.